Good morning, everyone. It's once again Monday morning in October, and we give thanks to the Lord for a new day, a gift of this day to live and to pray and to dwell in God's word. And then therefore that word will reflect through the rest of our, our day and kind of have a conversation with it. It's kind of like how, is how I like to think about it. So let us begin our morning in Luther's morning prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son. You have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day from all sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Begin our morning in the word. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Well, our, we're going to continue with Places Along the Way by My, Martin and Micah Ma, Marty. Um, it's Meditations on the Journey of Faith. And today's, last week's we started this and it was Thursday and it was chaos. So today is Eden. And here's our, our picture. It's like a cherry blossom, perhaps, with a bee on it. So that pollination, that life beginning and continuing. So our verse is from Genesis chapter 3. Verses 22 to 24. Then the Lord said, See, the man has become like one of us knowing good and evil, and now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a sword flaming and turning to guard the way to the tree of life. Eden, the garden of God, is a place that we will not find on literal maps, the first such place on our journey. Eden now is like a dream, a result of imagination, something evoked by memory. Paradise, as we call it, the perfect situation for humans to enjoy each other, their world, their God, if only dot, dot, dot. If only we could go back to paradise, we all would be well. So we think, but each day we see evidence that we do not naturally belong under the gaze of God. If only we could go ahead to the continuing coming paradise, a new Eden, but we cannot escape into the future. We walk our paths in a world that in a way remembers Eden and looks forward to another. If only we could recognize the value of the days after and before paradise. The creator chooses to let us till the ground. The farmers among us know what this means. The rest of us denied Eden get to find our own meaning in each day. After Eden, we get to live lives of work, of challenge in pain and loss, of delight in health and gain of service in the faith, face of human need, of gratitude for the Christ. And the prayer that accompanies this is as follows. Let us pray. Denied the perfection of an Eden, we live, O Lord, ready for the tasks and gifts you give us. Amen. I kind of, what was coming through my head as I was reading it is some of those like um, East of Eden and Paradise Lost and some of those classic works of, um, of the fall, of how we, we fell from this place of utopia, you know, the Shangri-La, the, the, the island, whatever. I mean, this in literature and in, in film has been ex explored in so many different ways of what would paradise be like. And it's, it's always curious that 
a lot of the times that utopia becomes a dystopia, becomes a place where it isn't, um, it appears to be equitable, it appears to be just, but it, uh, the underpinnings of it are that dystopia of how you get to be selected to be in this utopia or, or what's being hidden behind the curtains, behind um, the structures that are there to order even in utopia. Granted, our utopias, our dystopias in our, our literary sense and our imaginations right now are not gonna um, reach up to the point of heaven, of the kingdom of God here at hand. And scripture doesn't say that Eden and heaven are the same thing by any means, but in the sense, one sense they are, the presence of God, God walking with, God in the midst, God visible and um, blessing and sustaining life that we see. The new heaven and the new earth, there will be a redemption also for our earth, not just for us who walk upon this earth, who are children of God. And also in Fish and Revelation, we see that beautiful image of, of all kneeling before the, the feet of Christ and worshiping Christ, the chorus of angels singing God's glory. I wonder if, I mean, I th when we get there, I, I believe and hope that it will be um, heaven-like. But I wonder also many times if heaven is not what we expect it to be. Um, I think a lot of us conflated into a an you know, ever ongoing party or a golf match or you know music on clouds with with chubby angels. Um, why are we projecting that into heaven? Would be a question for the day. But also the if onlys, how we look forward to heaven and we look back to Eden and we try to reclaim this um, this place, this sense of I mean, maybe abundance is what we're trying to go for, or ease or peace. And um, the reality is we don't then live in the middle here, where the kingdom of heaven does break in, does bring life, does give us work to do. And yes, there could be weariness in our work. There can be challenges in it. But as the farmers know, living by faith, that our, our hard work and our toil can be completely disrupted by rain at the wrong time or, or no rain and hail and wind and pestilence can all take our crops away. And yet the bounty of our harvest and yet the seeing the fruit of your labor grow and mature and be harvested and brought to tables is a a fulfillment of purpose, a place in this created world that um, is important and valued and good. You hear that? Good. Not in Eden, not in heaven, but yet good. So after Eden, it says, you know, we get, we get to live lives of work, of challenge and pain and loss, of delight and health and gain of service in the face of human need, of gratitude for the Christ. So the gratitude for the Christ, I think is the easy one because we get a, you know, even when we're in the midst of challenges and loss um, and also celebration, that perspective of God is with us and for the good and the bad, the, it's not permanent. It's a blessing of the moment or it's a challenge of the moment. And that moment might extend different, different time frames. But what endures is the word of God. And where our story will have its telos, its end, is with Christ, just where it had its beginning. And so today, as we're sent out, and it could be that you're not sent out very far these days because it's COVID, um, but yet we are being sent out. We're being sent out into those relationships we've been talking about the last seven months into our gardens, into maybe sprucing up the house. I mean, I got some Halloween decorations up here. It feels a good new, new day in, in my house as, you know, 
bats and skeletons and, and, and pumpkins are a good remembrance of life and of death, I guess, too. But the being called to, to service in the face of human need, that we have our hands and feet on the ground are doing amazing things. God is using us for the good of our neighbor. God is using us to, to laugh and to cry, to be broken open and to be restored. And so we can live our days, I believe, looking back to Eden and see how, you know, we were placed in the garden and we were given a command to be fruitful and multiply. And well, and Adam and Eve also to name and to, to till the earth, to work the earth, to, to name what's going on and, and give it meaning and life and hope. And that remains, we still have work and it changes throughout our life. And that um, will be with us all the days of our life. And so while we, instead of looking for what now is guarded from chair by cherubim or guarded by, you know, you must die to come to the fullness of the kingdom of glory. In the middle, instead of looking for what we don't have, what do you have? And how can we rejoice and be glad in that? You've been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for forming us out of the dirt and then sending us out despite our sin to care for that dirt, to care for the earth, to care for one another, to care for ourselves. When we fail at that, Lord, remind us where you have placed us, where you have commissioned us, where you have, where you continue to work in and through us for the sake of ourselves, our neighbors, and all of creation. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray, we ask you to be with us in our tasks so that we bring healing and forgiveness and mercy where we go in our work. We ask you to help us to give thanks for the creation that you give before us, for the beauty of our, our properties, of the lake that is before us, of the mountain in its majesty, of the fragile meadows of the raging streams and waterfalls. We give thanks for, as we see in creation, the beauty that you have created and that we appreciate. May our vision also be widened to all that you have created and all that needs healing and wholeness and our call in that. We pray for the, the gifts of relationship with others. We are interconnected, Lord, and that's a challenge and a blessing all in one. We give you thanks for making us dependent. Yes, I said that. Thank you for making us dependent. Even when we fight it, Lord, even when we want to go at it alone and we, we turn away from help or we deny help to others. We are interconnected and we are a body of Christ. We are also a world that, that where actions in one place impact life in another. So thank you for making us dependent on one another and not self-sustaining in and of ourselves. Make us realize that the importance of that, the challenge of that, the opportunity of being connected and dependent, and the humility of the reality of circumstance that has placed us where we are. 
and the obligation or the responsibility, perhaps, Lord, of seeing the need and the dignity of others. For the communion of faith in your church, we pray. Continue to bless us, Lord, and help us to be church in this time, to be united in the gospel, united in Christ, who comes and is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith that gives us a place to stand and a place to hope. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. Lord, today we lift up especially President Trump as he is being treated for COVID-19. Be with him and his care team so that he can return to health. We pray for all those in his um, administration and those senators who have also contracted COVID-19. May you be with them for swift, swift and full recoveries. We also ask for you to be with those who are um, impacted in the secondary level by all that is happening right now in Washington and who are stepping up in leadership or shifting roles. It's a complicated and trying time, Lord, and we ask you to see us through it, to give us hope in the midst, and to heal bodies and also heal countries. We ask you to be with other leaders throughout our world who are struggling in this time of pandemic and, and leadership in this time. We lift up also other religious leaders and we ask you to help us hear their wisdom as well of, of the need for just distribution of, of resources and the dignity of all people on this planet. We lift up also um, our elections that are coming up in less than a month now, Lord, and may you guide that process and may your will be done. We pray for our governor here, Governor Inslee, and the governors of our states, the states of this union. We pray for the elections that are happening and those ballots that are going in now in, in every race on the ballot. We also ask you to, in the meantime, also have those leaders continue to care for the common good and promote the general welfare of their citizens whom they are called to lead. For the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare or COVID-19, we pray, Lord, we pray for violence in our country and around the world. We pray for the the, those who have lost family members to COVID and those who are fearful of, of getting COVID. We pray for our essential workers and enough PPE for them to be safe. We pray for a vaccine, Lord, or a, a very good treatment plan. We pray for flu and cold season. That's just going to make everything even more complicated, God. Give us patience, give us hope, and give us guidance, and give us health. For all who work for peace and international harmony, we pray. And for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we ask your protection and your zeal to go with them. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, thanks be to God for your faithfulness. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. And as we are called to care for the earth and one another and to rejoice in your presence, we ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day and always. Amen.